Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about HP Z820 Workstation. Specifically, we're going to go over how to install the memory and the different options and go over the CPUs as well. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HP Z820 Workstation. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first things first, there are uh, two CPUs inside. It's an LGA 2011 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon E5 2600V1 and V2 series. People ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And really, there's a bunch of good CPUs in that series, but I like to get two eight cores for a relatively cheap price, something like uh, E5 2670 is uh, one of our go-tos when we're building uh, just because again you can get them for really cheap put two of them in have 16 cores and not pay a ton um, there's also some other good ones uh, you can get uh, for relatively cheap uh, E5 2660 is good uh, you can get E5 uh, 2620 V2, you can get E5 2660 V2, E5 2670 V2. Uh, if you want to go a little bit higher in, you can get E5 2690, uh, E5 2690 V2. I mean, there's a, a bunch of them in that series that are really good. And again, the price points for V1s and V2s right now, uh, they've come way down, so you can get them for a good price point uh, and build this thing out for you know relatively inexpensive. So if you're looking to upgrade your CPUs, that's a, a good way to go. Uh, as far as the RAM is concerned, there are 16 DIMM slots inside. It takes DDR3 memory. Uh, there's a number of different speeds you can use. You can use 1066, 1333, 1600, or 1866. I will note though, if you put in 1866, it's just going to clock back down to 1600, which is the true fastest speed. So just know going into it that if you're you know, going to spend extra money, uh, the 1866 will clock back down. Okay. Uh, as far as the, uh, the different sizes, you can use a 2 gig, a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, or all the way up to a 32 gig. No no, unfortunately, 64 gigs do not work with this machine, so a 32 gig will be the highest. Which brings us to what type of RAM can I use for this machine? You can use ECC register, which is also known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduce, which is known as an LRDIM. Uh, sometimes uh, with different machines, it depends, but in this general gener generation, uh, but not with the Z820 specifically, sometimes LRDIMs have a scalability um, advantage where you can get a higher scalability. With the Z820, that is not the case. You actually get the exact same scalability, which is 500. 512 gigabytes using 1632 gigs with both LRDIMs and ECC Reg. So that is one thing I did want to point out um, that there's no real advantage with LRDIMs with the uh, the Z820. Um, there is with a lot of other machines, uh, but with the Z820, RDIMs or LRDIMs, both are really great. Uh, if you want to put 512 in, either way will be great. Okay. Uh, so now that we know a little bit more about it, I'm going to grab my uh, my ESD gloves. I'm going to uh, show you how to physically install it, and we'll be right back. All right, now that I have my ASD gloves on them, I flipped it around to just show you and make it a little bit easier. Right here, you're going to find this latch, and you're just going to lift it up, and it's just going to come straight down. Very easy, pretty much like any desktop you've been in. I'm going to lay it down and bring the camera in just to show you the insides, but I did want to show you just how to open it. Very simple. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. So we've turned it to the side, and we're just going to simply pop open the latch. and lift the top up nice and simple. So unfortunately this one isn't uh, uh, incredibly easy to get into as a whole. There's, as you can see there's a lot going on here so if you want to access um, the motherboard and get to your CPUs and to your RAM you're going to have to do a, a couple of steps first. So uh, first things first uh, we're going to want to lift this up right here and just going to pull it straight up and you'll notice that there is an air shroud right here. Uh, this air shroud, you cannot access it until you remove this first. So th there are the two green pieces that you see here. You're just going to kind of pinch them together and lift up. And this is actually kind of hooked in back here, so you just need to make sure you don't bend that metal. And then put it to the side. And now you'll see we actually have access. Um, you can see all your slots over here. You can see the air shroud itself is covering the two CPUs and all the dim slots. So what we're going to do now is right in here, and it's hard to see, this is actually plugged in so that the fan on the air shroud has, uh, has power. So we're just going to lift this straight up. And it's kind of flimsy. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of this design. Uh, but we're going to just pull this straight up. All right. And actually, I'll show you real quick. So you'll see this is the connector I'm talking about right here that goes straight down the side and uh, into the motherboard. So we'll just put our air baffle to the side. 
and grab our memory modules. So before we install the modules, uh, I will note uh, that this is CPU 0 and this is CPU 1. CPU 0 is going to control the 8 DIMM slots right here and CPU 1 is going to control the 8 DIMM slots right here. You'll also see they're color coded white and black. Uh, basically that means that there are four uh, memory channels per CPU and two DIMMs per memory channel, okay? Uh, which is important because when you're installing the modules, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the rank rule or anything like that because there's only two DIMMs per module. So, all right, now we're gonna go ahead and actually uh, and start our upgrade. Uh, but before we do, I wanted to note, I like to pop open all the tabs first. Uh, to me, it's a simple, easy thing that just helps protect the parts uh, when you go to install them that you don't have uh, any of the uh, tabs just fighting you as you're trying to put the modules in, potentially pushing back a little bit. And then the next thing I always like to note is you'll see there's this uh, tab or this uh, notch right here in the middle. This notch is known as a key. You'll notice it's not perfectly centered, uh, which is important because there's a, a plastic piece that sticks up inside of each DIMM slot, which means you have to line, align this perfectly because if it's not lined up properly, you could damage the, the lead itself or you could damage the DIMM slot. Uh, neither are problems you want to run into. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start here on uh, CPU 0 and we're going to start on the uh, first DIMM slot and you'll notice I've lined everything up properly and I've put it in. Next thing I want to note is I'm not holding the module, it looks like the module's in, but the module's not fully seated and that's a, a very common user error that we see all the time where someone uh, thinks that they, um, they have a bad DIMM and it's really the module just not properly seated. So you want to hear these two clicks those two clicks let you know that the uh, the tabs here have actually latched in uh, and pulled the module down so the leaves are fully flush and now you're actually connected to the dim slot and you'll notice that the tabs out here how much further out they're sticking than this tab right here that lets you know that basically you've, you've done a, a successful install and that's one of the things at the very end I always recommend is check all of your tabs and make sure that they're all uh, fully in because if they're not then you could have just accidentally gone through and uh, not fully seated it and generally it'll be one side's in and the other side's just barely sticking out uh, but it's enough and uh, it's a very common user error and I tell people that all the time I don't care if you've been a technician for 20 years or you're just upgrading your uh, your workstation at your house uh, it's an easy thing to happen so one of the things I always just point out to watch out. So the other thing, when we talk about this notch in the middle, uh, right now it flips. So if I, this is what happens sometimes. Someone's in a good groove. You're just popping them in. You're popping them in. You come to the side and you don't really notice that it flips. And that's when uh, damage can happen. So you just want to make sure that you line it up perfectly so that you don't run into any issues. Because, again, you don't want to... Uh, damage a module or, or damage a dim slot and potentially have to replace a motherboard or something silly like that. So just the simple things that I always point out. So all right, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, fast forward and fill this whole thing up. All right, so we've completed our upgrade. We've put in 1632 gigs. So this is going to be a massive improvement on performance overall for this uh, Z820. This is actually for a local customer that dropped by and just asked us to basically make it a lot faster for him. And he uses it at home um, as his desktop. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to return it back to him. I feel like this will be a pretty good upgrade overall. So if, um, if you're looking to upgrade your Z820, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com, sales at cloudninjas.com. We have a ton of different variety for this machine. If you're just looking for a couple 8 gigs, if you want a bunch of 16 gigs, if you want to max it out and put in 32 gigs, uh, we'd love to help you out and offer you uh, a great deal. And uh, everything's in, in stock and can ship out right away. So just email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this bad boy back together. Um, and this is a... Uh, you know, always the fun part. So we're going to start with the uh, the air shroud, the air baffle. And so as we noted, uh, you have this connector and it lines up right here. You'll see this uh, plastic piece that's sticking out. So you just want to slide this in and you're going to want to be gentle and go down nice and slow. This is, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of this design. It doesn't really feel like it's supported and it's in, uh, but this is just kind of how it is, unfortunately. All right, so the next piece we're going to come over here and we had talked about these two little pieces over here so you want to kind of slide this in and hook it 
and then we're going to pinch back down and pop it in. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to put this back on. And this will just click in. And just like that, we're done. So if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Take care, guys.